What's going on, everyone? This is Adam and Craig with Grandstand Golf. In this show, we're talking DFS sleepers for the 2020 RSM Classic. Craig, we are on an unbelievable streak. Two weeks ago, Carlos Ortiz nailed that one. Last week at the Masters, best sleeper out there. You got him, Cameron yeah, Smith. Yeah, it's been good. Munoz, too, was good last week, and then he just fell off it on, on the last day. But still, what, I mean, you're not necessarily searching for a win from a sleeper so i'm sure he got plenty of drafting yeah points he was he was still a very play. very solid play it's just more that the it's the it's the ones that potentially win you weeks those are the ones that you really like to like to hit at 6700 he was a lot better than uh molinari <laughs> true heard a couple of my true lineups. and i had <laughs> both of them plugged in and i had <laughs> some of my best lineups had molinari instead <laughs> yeah all right Sleepers, RSM Classic, you guys know the drill. We're going to go 7,500 or below on DraftKings. We're each going to give you three of our favorite sleepers. Uh, let's jump yeah, right into if it. If you want right, anything okay. more about the course, we did post our picks video already. Um, so, so we get yeah. into the course more here. Here we're just going to talk about the sleepers. Yeah, you bet. Chez Reavy, my first sleeper. Just reaching that upper limit. I almost had him as a pick, but he's in the sleeper category. I feel like he's just way too underpriced. 7,500 on DraftKings. He's 33rd there on FanDuel. He's 9,300. He's 34th. Um, doesn't have actually a big history here. He hasn't played since 2016. He plays 33rd there. But when you look at Chez's career, he's really had kind of a big jump in perform performance and earnings and all that since 2019. So he's not the same player he was in 2016. Two of the key stats I'm looking for uh, for Sea Island, I'm looking for driving accuracy. I'm looking for proximity to hole. Right now, to start the 2020-2021 uh, PGA Tour season, Jez is 11th in driving accuracy, 15th in proximity. He has a win in 2019, 2019 TBC River Highlands. Similar kind of profile feel. You need accuracy. You need proximity. So I, I, I really like Chez's, uh where he's at for 7,500 at this course. Yeah, I think, you know, this course, I mean, length, distance always helps, but there's courses sure. where players yeah, yeah. that don't have the big distance can still go, can go and win. And to me, yeah. that's this type of course, and that's the type of player that Chez is. So, you know, I, yeah. I think it, it's a little surprising me, he, to me he hasn't played here more because I, I do think it's a good course for him. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I like the no, play. Absolutely. My first one here, uh, Harold Varner the third, seventy four hundred on DraftKings. He's thirty seventh there, eighty eight hundred on FanDuel, fiftieth there. So you know a bit of a discrepancy in prices. Yeah, that's... Um, FanDuel does okay. bunch them together a bit more, so he's only a couple hundred dollars off of being thirty seventh there. But uh, but still, right, uh, right, right. you know, a bit of a difference. Um, yeah, really good form, except you know he has had a couple notable blowups, uh, but. Five top 30s in his last seven starts. Uh, three of those are top 15s. I think there's enough people, too, that played him in Bermuda when he blew up on Friday to miss the cut. <laughs> That's what I was just going to bring up. Yeah. You know, I think that does keep his ownership a little bit lower. If, if it wasn't for that at his price, I think his ownership would get really high. And it still might, but I, I think that does pump the brakes on it a bit. Um, yeah, absolutely. You know, looking at his stats, he's he's just a tee to green stud. Uh, you know, short season so far, he's fourth in this field for 2021. Uh, if you look back to last year, the full season or the full COVID interrupted season, right, right, uh, right. he's first in yeah. this field in terms of strokes gained tee to green. Yeah. So, I mean, that you know, we always talk about it. it gives you a great baseline, gives you a pretty good floor uh, as long as he can go out there and perform. The value for our model, he comes in at number two behind right. Peter Malnati, which which is a little bit surprising. <laughs> um, I mean, he's just been playing strong. Malnati has. He's he's so on Malnati. Well. I I'm gonna, you know, uh, he's not one of my sleepers here today. Um, but and I'm likely gonna plug him in. But he's averaging, right. I want to say, almost two strokes game putting. So like. He, he right. it just I don't see it being sustainable, but I kind of want to ride the wave with Malnati. Um, someone yeah. who's doing it with T to Green, I feel like there's more sustainability there, and I think there there is more like okay, then if he does have a good week putting, it means he can win and yeah. uh, you know really go out there. Um, so yeah, I like HV three this week. Um, yeah, with HV three, I mean, I immediately just my head went immediately to Friday at Bermuda where he <laughs> burned so many people, including me, including you, I think in a lineup or two. Um, and I think, I mean, he unfairly got price discounted because of that. Uh, but people, I mean, just by nature are emotional, so they might just skip right over him. 
Uh, so interesting play. I like it. I like, I mean, TD Green is pretty consistent. So. Yeah, we'll see. My next, Chris Kirk, 6,800 on on DraftKings, 73rd on FanDuel. He's 7,700, uh, 94th there. So again, a little bit cheaper comparison on FanDuel. Uh, I mean, Chris Kirk, he's a guy who went out and he won quite a bit in the early like 2010s when he first uh, got out there. Uh, kind of public uh, time off in 2018, 2019. He, since 2019, he's kind of had a career rejuvenation uh, he's been playing well. He, I mean, his PJ Tour starts when he gets some. Corn Ferry Tour starts. Seven career wins. So he's just, I mean, when he plays well, he can play so well. Um, his last win, June 2020, on the Corn Ferry Tour. So he has been playing really good golf lately as well. If we go way back to when he was kind of in the quote-unquote prime of his career, he has a win here. 2014. Yeah, that's always a good sign. <laughs> yeah, since then... He's been fourth in 2015 and fourth uh, in 2018. He's kind of a local guy. You can see. I was going to say, he's he's got, clearly, he's got the sponsors <laughs> on his side. He's got the RSM logo there. Uh, he uses the facilities here. I, I mean, I just can't get away from him at 6,800. It's, it seems like a no-brainer with where his possible like. He can go out and win this thing. His ceiling is so yeah. high. Yeah, I like it. I haven't looked too much into him. Um, I, I think with the course history and the fact that he still trains here, that in and of itself makes him an, an intriguing play. Yeah. Um, you know, and it actually uh, brings me right into my next one, JT Poston. Uh, 7,300 yeah. on DraftKings. He's 42nd. 8,800 on FanDuel. That's 50th. Uh, he is also one of the, you know, there's a lot of these pros um, that call uh you know that are locals that i, th I think it's saint and the georgia saint simon's area. island um right, the, right. The, there's a whole bunch of courses around there and it's really davis love the third has built this golfing community he's kind of like the godfather out yeah. there um and <laughs> you know we'll get into it a bit more on the twitch show on wednesday but you know post yeah. hudson swafford uh, zach johnson kucha like a lot of these guys especially a lot of the guys with georgia roots guys. call this place home um, which, yeah. you know, it just gives you that little bit of an edge. Uh, if there is a, a weird angle Absolutely. you're playing into a hole or something like that, you just, you know how it, how the green may receive it, all those type of things. Um, anyways, on to JT Poston, three top 10 since the restart, uh, 14th yeah. here last year. Before that, he doesn't have a great course history, um, but you know, he is still right. a younger guy. So, you know, I, I'll, I'll forgive that. I think a 14th shows that you can play yeah. the course well. Um, Absolutely, yeah. he's a strong putter and he is putting well right now. Uh, mm -hmm. Four tournaments before the Masters, he has averaged over a stroke gained around putting. I think the lowest, yeah. you know, for wow. over the course of a whole tournament in that span was something like 0. 0.6, 0. 0.64, I think it was. Wow. So, you know, he's putting really well. He, he missed the cut at the Masters too. And I think where he was priced, he likely... Uh, had a, quite a bit of ownership because so many people were trying yeah. to cram stars in. Um, I think in the, like the six, seven, eight percent range, like he was one of the pretty popular, really yeah, low for sleeper. the people in that price range. He he would have been amongst the yeah. most highly owned. Uh, but so I, I think there might be a little bit of a. I just got burned with him. I'm not going back to the well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I like him. I like him this week. I think he has decent uh, top ten potential. Um, and and if yeah. not, I, I think he's he's got a good chance of getting a top thirty or 20 i completely agree i like him I, I i agree with the top 10 i think i would be a little bit concerned about his ownership that might be my only thing i'd have to see who else is kind of in that 73 area so, on draft you know again we'll get into it more in the twitch show but there's a ton of people yeah. down in the low sevens high eights that i like like there's a lot yeah. of attractive names a very balanced lineup is definitely viable this week so not balanced at all. I'm going basically the bottom of the barrel here. Uh, 6,100 on DraftKings, FanDuel, bare minimum 7,000. Jonathan Bird. Uh, I mean, if there's a trend of guys over 40 winning uh, this season, maybe Bird can continue it. I think he's 42 or 43. Uh, but kind of staying in that same uh, train of thought. Like he's a Sea Island resident. He, he obviously plays here quite, I mean, I think he's played here pretty much every year. He trains here, I'm sure. Um, but looking at how he's done compared to other years and how his kind of correlated performance has been, he's made more cuts this season with three than all of last season. 
So when you, when you look comparing year to year, you have to look how these guys are coming in and going out of this tournament. If you if they're out of form, obviously they're not going to pop. Yeah, you don't ex- you wouldn't so, expect that year to be good yeah. at this tournament if their whole year was bad. Exactly. So in his last four starts, he kind of has two top twenty fives and two missed cuts. And if you follow kind of the trend of his season, when he's playing poorly, he misses a cut. When he's playing well, it's a top twenty five. So I think with this kind of streaks of made cuts, I mean, they're in the kind of the 40s range. They're not necessarily top 10s or anything like that. But he's making the cut and making the weekend. I think he can continue kind of that trend and get another top 25 here for at the very bare minimum might be enough in a GPP. Yeah. Looking at his kind of overall stats, one last thing, uh, 16th in proximity to hole. It's one of those stats I've been kind of keen on this week. So I, I like that as well. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to go down that low. Uh, but if if you do want to go down that low <laughs> in the salaries, uh, it's a name to look at. He he also, I was reading about, uh, you know, all the guys who are residents here. And yeah. uh, I'm pretty sure it was him where they said, you know, five-time PGA winner, which is the same as Ricky Fowler. <laughs> So, you know, <laughs> yeah. they got similar pedigree, I guess. Yeah, exactly. There you uh, go. My last one here, uh, he's he's a guy we brought up before, Doug Gim. Uh, yeah. 6,700 on DraftKings, that's 81st, and 9,300 on FanDuel, which is 34th. So, you know, this guy on DraftKings, he's cheaper than both of the other guys that I have picked. And on FanDuel, he's wow. more expensive than both. So, clearly, uh, both sites are seeing something a little bit different. Uh, he does yeah. have a pretty good run in his last four starts. Three of them tied for 23rd or better. Yeah. He's currently in this field. He is currently tied for sixth in strokes gain total in this young season. And he's fifth in strokes gain tee to green. So I don't know if it's some of those things that maybe the FanDuel uh, pricers are, are looking at and, and right. his yeah, short-term no history. Um, but both of those, you got to like that when you're, you know, say on DraftKings, you're getting that for the 81st more, most expensive guy. I'll, I'll take yeah. the shot, you know? Um, and again, like I think he does have top 10, similar to, similar to JT Post, and I think he does have top 10 potential. Uh, but with someone down yeah. here, you do worry a bit about the cut. He's made five of his last seven, and he made the cut last year here when he didn't, you know, he yeah. didn't, oh, no, he would have just gotten status, I think, at that point. So I was looking into game because I, I, I was looking at him as a sleeper as well. His made cut last year came sandwiched in between seven missed cuts, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> So if he, I mean, if he was playing that poorly and he made the cut here, think about how he's going to be, like how well he can do here with when his like well. top ten yeah. T degree game. Like that's that's kind of scary to think about. Former uh, number one amateur in the world, I'm pretty sure. Uh, tons of tons of upside for Gim. Um, yeah, that DraftKings price. Again, might soak up. I was going to say that that's my I, one pump the brakes on him is I, I suspect ownership could get heavy with him um, because he, first off, whenever you have those people that have a decorated amateur career, I think people yeah. and they're young people are like I, I want to catch him when he's when he's breaking out. Yes. Um, yes. And then just the fact that you know clearly there's diff- some people are seeing him as more valuable than that just based on the on the pricing from Fanduel. Yeah, well, we've been teasing it the whole time. We have a Wednesday night Twitch show, 9 p.m. Eastern. We talk about like when you when you want to get these post ins, when you want to get these gims in, how else to differentiate on your lineup, uh, the player pool when you're making 20 lineups, 25 lineups, kind of how you're narrowing it down. If you're going to leave seller in the board, looking at different things like that. It's it's kind of the I don't know. It's one of my favorite shows we do all week. Well, one of the best things um, about it too is. Real- there's been a few times now that I've gotten sleepers, just the the people other people are asking about. Yeah. Um, I've looked a little bit further into them. I'm like, oh, I do really like this player as a sleeper. So it's all about the yeah, community, no, the, you know? The community is great, and the questions in there, the chat is great. Uh, I think it helps everyone kind of elevate their DFS game just a little bit. Yeah. Okay, so what else do we have going on this week? Our Joburg uh, Open European Tour DFS and Bets show is already out on our YouTube, so check that out. Our DFS model, it's completely free. It has stroke scene stats. It has our, as Craig mentioned, kind of our our model algorithm in there, all completely free. That's on our website, grandstandgolf.com. Our live Twitch show, Wednesday, 9 p.m. Eastern. Please join us then. Our username is grandstandgolf. And we're going to be doing our showdown picks, of course, all throughout the tournament, either on our website in an article or on YouTube. Yep. 
I don't know if I got anything to add. I mean, other than it's not really our model. I just use the previous years to figure out what might happen this year, what's most <laughs> likely to happen this year. Um, but yeah, we'll look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow if you can make it. Um, and if not, we'll see you next time. Yeah, take care. See you, everybody.